there, there still is a controversy as far as PSA testing and whether or not we should be even doing it. The United States Task Force a number of years ago came out with a recommendation giving it a great D. In other words, from what we feel are very flawed papers, one was known as the Plico paper, and after uh, much scrutiny, it was established that there were a tremendous amount of flaws in this patient, uh, in this, excuse me, in this paper, that many of the patients in the so-called control arm actually had been PSA tested right along. Uh, that's where a large portion of the conclusions were drawn by the United States Task Force. Additionally, there were no urologists, medical oncologists, or radiation oncologists on the United States Task Force panel. And this D rating, I think, is really at great odds with the way urologists think. Uh, I think that the issue that all of us understand is not whether or not PSA testing should be performed, but it's whether you should have a biopsy, and if you have a biopsy and you have finding of prostate cancer, what to do with that. The real question isn't to PSA test or not. PSA testing is really the only way we have for early detection of prostate cancer. Uh, there are still, this year, there's gonna be somewhere between 180 and 2,000 newly diagnosed cases. Deaths have always hovered around 28 to 30,000. Uh, without PSA testing, uh, you know, where we gonna go? Back in the day before we had PSA testing, you know, probably anywhere quoted from 30 to 60 percent of people presented with metastatic disease. That number has been totally reversed so that very few people today, probably less than 10 percent, present with metastatic disease, although currently in the last three or four years we're seeing an uptick of that because of the recommendations of the task force.